We're going to continue with conversation memory. The previous part that we looked at, we saw that we could just keep this basic rolling, or not even rolling, just ever-increasing array of responses where we ask it a question, it responds, so on. That'll run into problems when it gets so big. So now we'll see that we can use the buffer window memory. What this does is it will start to let old things roll off of the list. So here we can see I begin, and of course, I assume that you have an OpenAI key. You can modify this pretty easily to use just about any LLM source that you want because it's using the Colab, um, the Colab driver for this, the chat OpenAI. Just switch that to whatever class you need. And then, so we're ready to take a look at the chat conversation. So here what we're doing is we are importing a number of additional classes. So we are using a conversation chain and then the conversation buffer window memory. So this is going to keep only so many conversation pairs in its memory until it starts rolling the old ones off. So GPT-40 mini, you're a helpful assistant format answers with markdown. And here you see the driver, so that's chat open AI. If you just swap this part out with really just about any other driver for a large language model that they provide for you, it's gonna work great uh, because that's, that's what uh, Langchain gives you. Then we create our conversation buffer memory. So the memory has just five pairs. So it's gonna remember five chat pairs between you and the LLM, and we're not doing the verbose output. That is interesting. It gives us some more information, but we, uh, we converse, we, we get the uh, conversation, and we return the response. So here you can see it's working really just about like before. I will say, hello, what is my name? And it says, I'm sorry, but I don't have access to your personal information. And then I say, oh, sorry, my name is Jeff. And it says, nice to meet you, Jeff. And um, sometimes, so th this is a little bit ran random, but then I, I re-ask it what my name, usually it will know at that point. But again, this is somewhat, somewhat random. Um, probably lower temperature would certainly, certainly help with that. Then we converse with it in Markdown. So here, I can, I have another conversation with it. Believe me, it's not the markdown that helped it. It was just the, um, just the random nature of it. But I say, what is my name? And it's like, I don't know. I say, okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Jeff. And it says, okay, hello. Um, and then it says, nice to meet you, Jeff. How can I assist you today? And here you can see that it does output in Markdown. And since we're displaying the Markdown, which is the code that I have here, display Markdown, we can actually see it. It's good to do that because the large language models will frequently do this. We'll frequently use Markdown. Now here we are constraining it with a system prompt. So basically the template is um, you are you're a helpful agent to answer questions about life insurance. Do not talk about anything but life insurance. So it kind of has a complex on, on that. I initialize the memory and we're, we're good to go. So I say, hello, what is my name? It doesn't know. Um, I tell it my name is Jeff. It's programmed to answer questions about life insurance. It doesn't care what my name is. And then um, I ask it what my programming, favorite programming language is. It doesn't know. Then I ask it, what is the difference between a term and a whole life policy? And it's like, yes, finally, something I'm allowed to answer. And you can see the conversation memory that this thing keeps is really just all the pairs of uh, prompts and then the responses. It is possible now to overload the memory. So I tell it here, okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Jeff, and it's like that. And then I'm like, you have one job. Remember that my favorite color is blue. That's all you have to do. And um, it, it, um, 
Uh, it's so helpful. It even apologizes. It's like, you haven't done anything wrong yet. You don't have to apologize. And then I ask, do you remember my name? And it, it remembers that. And then I just start throwing random facts at it. I'm like telling it, remember fact one, remember all those facts. And um, notice though, it does remember my name, but it can't remember my color. Why does it remember my name? Because that, that rolled off the, the, the back of it. L look at what it's saying though. How can I assist you today? Jeff. It's like it's repeating itself. I mean, I don't know. Has somebody ever given you a phone number or something like that? Do they give phone numbers anymore these days? And you're just saying, okay, three, two, one, two, five, two, two, three, two, one, two, five, two, two. You don't want to forget it. That's basically what it's, what it's doing. And then we can actually look inside the memory of it and we see basically here, it's all the human AI uh, response, prompts and responses. So you can see it's, this is one of the limitations of this type of memory. And you also have to think, how big do you want to make that chat buffer? There's two, or the memory buffer, there's two things to consider here. One is just how big is your context window? You don't want it to grow to the point that it blows out your context window, obviously. So you want to set it to something lower than that. But then the other thing is cost. When you're using things like OpenAI, how much this cost is directly related to how much of that buffer you filled up. So you will probably want to set that memory size to something less than the total size of the buffer or They'll fill the buffer up and then every single subsequent thing they're saying is hitting that max buffer and that can be sometimes up to 60 cents or so. So you, you don't want to, you don't want to necessarily do that. Okay. Thank you for watching the video and please like, and subscribe. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll, you'll see all my future AI projects. Thank you for watching.